Hong CEO. Uh, welcome everyone. Hello. Hi, this is Gino. I'm Iruri, and we would like to thank you and welcome you to this third edition of Noni Conference. I'm really honored to be this year's hostess of this event together with with Gino. As uh, during the past two editions, I saw on so many important uh, people in the industry here on this stage that I never thought I would be here hosting this event. Thank you so for the organizers of NONI for giving us this opportunity. We are really excited about this edition. Two years ago we talked about video. Last year NONI was about online communities. In both of them we got high quality networking, sharing knowledge and having fun. This is the symbols of NONIC. We will try to increase this perception this year. Uh, in the two past edition, we had more than fi uh, 500 NONICers and this year we will have more than 200 new NONICers. And uh, be careful now. Something should happen now. <laughs> but we have some technical problem probably. Still some technical trouble. <laughs> As usual, it happens always. Special effort. Be really careful. <laughs> okay, we can go ahead. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Jim. Okay, uh, we uh, are pretty sure you already know someone very close to you on the on your left or right side. But what about the rest of the audience? Nonique's about real people who meet using real names. So you have one minute to introduce yourself to all people around you. The one on your right, on your back, in front of you. It's your turn. So one minute starting in three, three two, two, one, one now. Introduce yourselves to the one on your left, the one on your, la on your right. The one in front of you. <laughs> Hi, Gino. I'm Iruri. How are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, technical problems, right? This is the Nonic spirit. Just real people will meet. With Nonic, just to be a real person. That's right, you know, real people meeting real people. This is Nonic. During Nonic, let's get to know each other a little bit better. Well, as you know, this year's theme at Nonic is mobile. Uh, it's clear that mobile is in our lives. Uh, mobile phones and other devices such as iPad or other tablets like this one and that is becoming more and more essential to our lives. Let's have a look. Think about year 2000, yeah. uh, or let's say 1995. How many of you had a phone about 15 years ago? Raise your hand. 15. One, two, three, okay. And uh, now let's see, 10 years ago, more or less, quite more. Uh, now let's see, how many of you have a mobile device today? Raise your hand. Okay, 110%. And um, now let's see, how many of you have two or more mobile devices here with you today? Oh, that's fine, that's fine. Um, we know that uh, you're here to learn about tech trends, both present and future of the technology. And we are really going to have a good time together during these two days, don't you think, you know? You're right, you're right. But let's talk about the schedules for today. We will have two intense days and we will have seven keynotes from different leaders in the industry, two round table discussion on mobile related topics, 15 workshops and tons of networking opportunities. As a reminder, please note that everything is included in the price of the ticket. Entry to all lectures and workshops, coffee breaks, lunches, and a spectacular conference dinner at night party. 
Today, we will have five of the seven key keynotes and two panels. And we will have representatives from some of the most companies in the industry on stage. Mozilla, TouchType, Just3, and more. All conference and round table will be held here in the multibox, and coffee break will be served upstairs at 11. This could, could be a good chance to network. Don't be shy. Just before lunch, please remember that we will present the startup competition finalists. In your welcome pack, you have a form for voting the startups. And you will have the chance to vote at the end of the morning session just before lunch. Remember, you can't go to lunch without having voted some startups. So people at the entrance won't get you go out <laughs> without your vote. Uh, in your welcome pack, you have some basic information, password for the Wi-Fi, information about main location, about Bilbao, uh, the official T-shirt, and uh, the survey to improve Nonic. And after this long and exciting day, you, are, uh, you all are invited to the dinner and the party at the Café Antokia at uh, 8.30. Remember that both dinner and the party are included in your reg registration fee, so feel free to join us. Some of our keynote speakers will also be there, so it could be a great opportunity to talk to them. But please confirm you'll be attending or not if you don't have some uh, yet. You'll find additional information, as you know said, uh, in the welcome pack. We hope to meet you all there tonight. Remember, the hashtag for Twitter is SharpNoNeek. And just in case you didn't get yet, you can connect to Wi-Fi using the Nonic network and the following password, which is very long and weird, so you can just check your welcome pack for the password. And last announcement before we start, please don't forget to register to the open workshop uh, for tomorrow. The space is limited, and we have to get them already as soon as possible. So the schedule is on, on your program, so take a look and be sure to, you don't miss anything. As a reminder, the presentations are going to start punctual, starting from now. Well, no more words. No, no more words. Let's go to the point. So, another question for you. Uh, how many of you have ever browsed the web using Firefox? Raise your hands. Okay, someone will be very happy today. <laughs> this browser has reached more than 50% market share in dozens of countries. Um, thanks to Mozilla Europe, Firefox is translated into more than 75 languages worldwide. Our first speaker is the founder and president of Mozilla Europe. Before that, he was with Netscape until uh, 2003 and helped to launch the Open Web Project aimed at prompting web standards and accessibility. I'm really honored to have him here at Nonic. Please give a warm welcome to Tristan Nino. Good morning. Oops, sorry. Good morning, everyone. So, wow. This is not what I've left yesterday. Yes, these Microsoft products are so intuitive, I can't use them. Um, mm -hmm. It's even harder in Spanish, I have to say. Yes, good, thank you. You have the good vibes to make work. All right. Um, Let me do something quickly. Yes, all right. Good. All right. So, yes, sorry for the quick 
debacle. Hopefully it's over. Um, so I'm Tristan Nito. I'm, a, I, as we said before, I'm the founder of uh, Mozilla Europe, which is a nonprofit organization. Um, and I'm very happy uh, and, and proud to be here uh, today uh, with you at uh, NONIC. I'm still uh, recovering from uh, yesterday wonderful event and dinner that involved a lot of um, wine. Um, and I still have uh, kind of memories and feelings this morning. Um, I'm still experiencing a little hangover. Um, anyway, um, who is uh, Mozilla? Uh, I, I've seen this morning that many of you uh, use Firefox. Um, I'm afraid it's not enough. You should have more Firefox users. And the reason why is that we're a very specific organization with a very specific product. Uh, we have a, we, we are a global community. I mean, people see Firefox as a browser, which it is, of course, and so they think that Mozilla is just one more um, browser vendor commercial venture. Actually, we are not. We are a browser vendor, but mostly we are a global community of people. Um, means mostly volunteers who wants to make the web better. We want to make the web free, open, and accessible to all. We think the web is an amazing public resource that needs to be protected and nurtured. And this is what we do. And the way we do it is by building Firefox. So um, Mozilla is led uh, by a nonprofit organization, which is Mozilla Foundation. And uh, Mozilla Europe is one of the subsidiaries of uh, Mozilla Foundation. Our mission, as I told you, is to promote openness innovation and opportunities on the, on the web. And having you here in these seats today is a testament that the web is full of opportunities because I, I suspect that everyone here wants to take, uh, well, wants to use the opportunities uh, offered uh, by, by the web. So I'll start with an easy remark this morning. Uh, so easy that we tend to forget it. The web is wonderful. The web is like totally amazing. I mean, the web has changed the world and this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. The web is 20 years old now. Uh, it is actually mainstream for only a, a few years, maybe five or 10 years. And this is just the beginning. Um, let's, let's step back for a moment and imagine let's say a day or two days, like uh, a Sunday and a Monday without the internet. At, at a work level or at a personal level, the web is, what is, is a tool that is, it's hard to imagine how to do without now. Now, you know, Humanity has been able to do it for several thousand years without the web, so it's, it's possible. But for us, our lives has changed so much um, that it's hard to imagine how we could do without the web, how we could do without uh, Wikipedia, without reading the news, without going to YouTube, without going to Facebook, without using Twitter. Um, everything uh, is, is now enable and made better with the web. Even dating, I mean, online dating, come on. It's a big thing, you know, it's, even that has changed the way people, you know, find relationship. Um, and by the way, if my wife is listening, I promise I've never tried these things. Because I, I was married before the web was invented. Um, so, wh what makes the web the web? There are a couple of key things that makes the web wonderful. It is the fact that anyone can participate to the web. What do you need to get started with the web? Well, basically you need a device. In most cases, a PC, although we've seen it's, a, it's changing, it's evolving. But the PC is a essential 
for the web. And once you have a PC, well, you have free tools uh, to, to participate. If you have a web browser, which is free, uh, you, if you have a text editor, which is free, at least comes bundled with your operating system, um, then you can view the source of the web pages you visit, and from there, you can learn. Because actually, it's pretty easy to understand. I mean, although when you view this, the source of Gmail, then you get into trouble. But if you view the source of a Wikipedia page, then it's understandable, and then you can build from there. So with free software, if you have a PC and an internet connection, you can get started and learn the web and you can build your first web page. It's gonna be full of syntax problems, it's gonna be ugly, but it's gonna be alive. And you can improve it. And you can learn more, you can learn from your mistake. And actually without really understanding it, you are part of the web. Even if your page is ugly, even if the content is not interesting to many people in the world, you are part of the web, not only by consuming content, but being a tiny, tiny force that is making the web a little bigger. And because we have like two billion people today on the internet, just you know, two billion people adding their small piece of the internet is making it grow and it making it amazing and reflecting the diversity of the human of the of mankind so essentially when you get started you don't have to buy stuff from someone you don't have to sign a contract with someone in order to use the web well you need an internet service provider but after that you're done I mean you you're you're part of the internet um, and if you want to build a website you don't have to ask for permission if you want to build a web application no need to ask for permission. You, you can learn, you can hack, you can, you know, have fun with it and make it happen. And no one is to say, ah, oh, no, you can't do that, you know. These this, uh, this pictures of this cat here, not good taste, you can't do that. So it really, it's, it's beautiful because you can experiment, you can have fun, you can build it. You don't have to get permission from anyone. You don't have to sign a deal with the uh, VP of business development of the internet to publish something, right? You can just publish it. This is essentially fundamentally important for the web. Well, it, it, and it's not natural. I mean, it's, we're very lucky that the web and the internet exist. Because if you go back 15 years ago, you, you will, you, the, old, the eldest, you know, with a gray hair like me can remember that at some point, if you wanted to go to the internet, well, there was no such internet. You could actually buy a subscription to AOL or CompuServe. And, and then if you wanted to set up a shop in there, you had to go and sign a deal with AOL or CompuServe or the, you know, the proprietary networks. And the entry fee was really high, and it, you had to pay to participate. Um, and it's, there was no competition, well, there, there was no competition basically because people were stuck inside a specific network. Now it is open, um, which is wonderful because there is competition, so people have choice, and uh, it really is for the better. The web has enabled uh, fantastic things. Uh, I'll give you two examples, um, one being Wikipedia and the other being Firefox. These two things, they're made by nonprofit organiza organizations, by volunteers, um, and in these two cases, this is the Basque Wikipedia and the Basque version of Firefox, which is interesting in a sense that they're both extremely useful for the users and also they're made possible because, well, despite the fact that it's a small population. 
if I, I don't know the exact number, uh, but if you have like one million people who speak Basque, I, I don't think that in most cases it's a market big enough to create an encyclopedia for free for only one million people. I mean, if you're a business person, you probably don't want to spend or invest the money to do that because, well, even if everyone is using it, it's just one million people and it doesn't make a lot of sense. You'd rather go and do one in Castellano or in English uh, or Chinese because the population is amazing. Does that mean that Basque is not interesting? No. I mean, Basque as a language, it's, it's just amazing. Basque, for the Basque people, I'm not, you know, you know that. I mean, it's, it's your culture. You don't want to get rid of it just because it doesn't make business sense to keep it. So this is, this is a very good example, in my opinion, that if you enable citizens to build stuff despite not thinking about return on investment, it's, they will build it. They will build a, a Basque version of Firefox. They will build uh, a Basque version of Wikipedia, even though it doesn't make business sense. But it makes sense because for them, it's a way to save their culture. So this is something interesting with the internet. It's not only about money. It's about willing to do something. It's about enabling people to do something. Now, let's, uh, let's uh, switch uh, topic uh, completely. Uh, let's forget mobile phones for a while and go back to the PC. Well, you have PCs like that with uh, Windows installed. Uh, you have uh, PCs with a shiny Apple on them, and they try not to call them PCs because it's confusing, but it's actually a PC, right? It's an Intel processor. Uh, it, it, is, it is a PC, it's a personal computer. Uh, although they, it's slightly nicer and shiny and, and everything, but it's a different piece of software running on it, which is a Mac. And there's Linux. And developing applications for the PC is hard because, well, if you, if you write for Windows, you reach, well, roughly 90% of the users maybe 85, I, it depends where in, in the world, but you reach 85 to 90 person people, and then you wanna go further and you start writing for the Mac, and you have to learn new tools, new APIs, uh, well, basically develop two versions of your application, but you're, you're still stuck at 98% or so of the users, and if you wanna go even further, you have to learn a third development chain, development tools, APIs, and everything. So if you want to cover everyone, it's very complicated. And this is exactly why the web has been changing the PC industry. It's because once you have a web browser, I don't care whether you run Windows or the Mac or Linux, all I care is that you run a browser so if I serve an application to your browser, you'll be able to use it. This is one of the reasons why uh, Gmail is so successful and all the new applications for the PCs are developed for the web browsers so, so that you can get rid of, of these issues of developing for multiple PC platforms. And as we said, mobile is here. It's totally here. It, it is freaking how much here it is. Uh, it's everywhere, everyone has a device, and suddenly the equation that you had with the Windows and the Mac and Linux, and then you have tablets and cell phones, and you have iOS, and then you have Android, and you have, you know, Blackberries. Oh my God, if you want to develop an application for this, it's just like a total nightmare. How can I serve so many users? Um, I, I just can't develop like 10 different applications for 10 different platforms. Um, 
and on top of that, there is a new, new parameter in the equation, which is uh, distribution. How do you distribute applications to the users? You can do that through app stores. I mean, if you want to distribute applications to users for the iPhone on the iPad, you gotta go through the Apple app stores or the app store, which has a set of rule, not really easy to understand, and in some cases, your application does not please Apple, and then you could get kicked out for some reason. And there are a lot of reasons, a lot of examples of applications that have been rejected by Apple for reasons that are a little weird, if you ask me. Or the explanation is weird. The reason may be a little clear in the minds of Apple's people, but it's hard to understand if you're a developer or a user. It's really hard to accept when you've built an application and it gets rejected, that means the gatekeeper refuses you to reach the users. That's, that's really painful. So the web here can help. You now have uh, very good web browsers um, on those devices. You have a decent web browser, which is the one, this is an Android uh, phone. Uh, so you, you have a decent web browser, and now there is Firefox on the Android platform, Firefox 4. Um, and then also on, on, the, on the iPhone and the iPad, you have a very good browser. So you can write application for the PC and these uh, mobile devices using uh, the web. So it's not all uh, devices. I mean, I own a Kindle, for example. There is a web browser, um, but I'm not sure you would run an application in that, uh, mostly because, well, the Kindle is made for reading, not for running applications. Um, also, something very interesting with the web is you, if you use the web approach, it's easier to distribute application. You you have control over the, the distribution process. If you wanna change the application, update it, make it better, well, you change the application on a server and the users instantly see a new version of the application. You don't have to go through uh, the painful process of you know, dealing with, with the various app stores on, uh, for Android and from Apple uh, to get ex acceptance and you know approval uh, by these app stores before distributing uh, this. I mean, I know it because we, we ship a version of Firefox on Android and I wish we could decide when we publish the thing and this doesn't work that way. Uh, and when it comes to um, the iPhone and the iPad, there is no Firefox on the iPhone and the iPad because Apple prevents us from doing that. So I know the pain, I don't wish you to go through this. Uh, this is why the, there is no, no Firefox for iPhone. Um, I need to think, the web just looks like a static web page like Wikipedia, which I love. I give them money, I give them my time, I give them my pictures. Uh, I'm a contributor, so I love Wikipedia, but it is a, a reference website. You know, it's, it's like a book on paper with nice illustrations and hyperlinks. But the web is much more than that, and if you use very cool applications uh, such as Google Maps, uh, Jolly Cloud, or Zimbra, these are web applications that are extremely powerful and innovative that are very far from the static web page uh, that you found on Wikipedia. It's a powerful application platform and it's easy to distribute application through, uh, through this. 
But as I told you, this is just the beginning. Uh, you may have heard about HTML5 and the related technologies. Um, so I'm, I'm using the HTML5 name, although it's, it's not, well, everybody uses it, so I do it too. Uh, but it's, it's much more than just HTML5. It's all related technologies without including CSS3 and tons of APIs. HTML5 is, is really going a step further uh, in making the uh, web development platform more efficient in order to build richer um, applications. I'll, I'll go into further details um, pretty soon. And also something very important is JavaScript, the language which runs application inside a browser, has made tremendous progress in terms of speed over the past, I'd say, three years. Basically, it's like, I don't know, 10 to 100 times faster than before. It means you can do amazing stuff uh, with it. I, I'll show you examples. And the examples are, well, demos. So this is, uh, this is HTML5, uh, a, dis a description of HTML5 and all, all the new features uh, that, that we have. I'll go all in a few details. First, something that you can do is actually um, draw on the screen like this. So this is, this is not a video. This is, this is a piece of JavaScript running and, and drawing on the screen. So basically we could imagine a, a kind of a Photoshop running in a browser, like manipulating images inside a browser. And it's the same <laughs> with video. Um, using open codecs, so, so, so that means we, everyone can create video and publish video without having to pay a fee. Uh, SVG, which means you can include mathematics um, and, and vector graphics inside a, a web page. Um, audio is an example. That's why I'm playing sound here. But it, better than that, I can manipulate the sound or analyze the sound. So it's just not displaying text and hyperlinks. It's playing sound and video and manipulating this within the browser. Of course, forms have been improved. Um, I can't demo this on this PC today due to uh, graphic drivers issues, but we have now 3D and a browser, provided you have recent drivers, uh, and tons of improvements in terms of layout. So an example is uh, CSS transitions. So this is, this is text, you know. Google can read this. It's accessible. I, can, I could edit it very quickly, but it has these cool transitions and transformations. Rounded corners that we've been waiting forever they are, and, and you don't have to put images, you know, that you draw in Photoshop with this block, which is the round corner like this, and this block, which is like that. No, it just, you say, I want this paragraph with rounded corners with that radius, and it works. And here we're changing the radius with JavaScript. This is why. Border images, and so many different improvement gradients. So this is not an image. This is actually text. I can select it, I can copy, paste it. Multiple backgrounds, columns, shadows, text shadow, and many, many improvements like that. One that I really like is text that is rich uh, from a, a typo uh, standpoint. Look at that, Th I can select this. It's not an image. 
just like that, two different fonts inside the document. Videos that have weird form and shapes. So tons of, of things that were not possible in the past, but that are made possible for uh, people who use a modern browser, which means Firefox 4, which is roughly 450 million instances of Firefox distributed and being in use in the world. But, uh, but that means that with our market share, we'll also influence the other vendors. So people who use Chrome and Safari uh, also have these features now. Um, and even Internet Explorer 9 coming back from the grave um, is adding these new features. So if, if, if your user uses IE9, Chrome, Safari, and Firefox, which basically, depending on the country, is like 60 to 80% of the people, uh, then, then you're safe, you can use that. Um, I'll, I'll go very quickly because we have so many uh, new stuff. JavaScript has, you know, like drag and drop. Uh, it's a lot of uh, complicated stuff, so I, I'll, I'll skip it. Device orientation, so on a mobile phone, because as I told you, Firefox run on these. Uh, I can detect from the web page whether uh, my phone is like that or like that and change the layout or the feature in the phone. Vector graphics, um, and of course, being cross-platform. Another uh, example, so I encourage you, uh, we, we have a website with, with demos, uh, tons of uh, cool demos. Uh, what could I do? Uh, yes. This is made entirely with HTML5. No flash at all. Music. Okay, I'll, I'll give it another try because that's too bad. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm so lame at that. Um, the ability for users to create uh, games like this. So th this is one of my creations. I'm a little focused on HTML5, so I, I made a HTML5 uh, thing. But I, I can go to build mode and, and, and create They work, yes, fantastic. So you can, you know, create games where people will actually play. Yeah, I think one is going to be better, oh, slightly better. <laughs> anyway, um, and something else I'm going to show you, and I can't running on this machine, so I'm going to show you a video about it. It's um, actually uh, augmented reality. So this is just a video where the user puts this piece of paper and then we add a layer. So locally in a browser, basically uh, the web page is analyzing the video in real time, spotting where the patterns are on, on the video and replacing the patterns with, uh, with a, in this case, uh, a, a basketball or something else. So JavaScript today is fast enough so we can analyze video in real time. So I, I, I quickly mentioned app stores um, earlier today. And it, 
as in everything in life, there is good and bad about app stores. So the good things about app stores on a mobile device is that they enable you to discover new applications. This is something we miss in the open web world. I wish that we could have that, but in the open web way, in an open way. Um, just to uh, give you an example, you want to play chess against a computer. Either you buy and download an application you put on your machine, or you could play that in your browser. But how do you, how do, you do that? Well, if you go to Google and type chess, type enter, you will find like, I don't know, nine billion answers. Uh, and whether it's going to be to buy uh, a chess game, history of chess, uh, history of you know, stuff, it's going to be the uh, chess page on Wikipedia, it's going to be everything but a chess application. So if we had uh, like a store where we could find applications and you would just go there and type chess, and they would offer you a list of applications rated by users. Like this one is good, this one is, looks good, but then the, the program is not that smart. If you're really good at chess, you're gonna beat it too easily. Uh, this one, I like it because it has history of famous um, chess games and stuff like that. Um, then people would be able to rate the various applications and other people would be able to choose easily what kind of applications they want to have. So this is something I like about app stores on mobile is that they give you that. They en enable you to discover applications and also rate the application and, and get feedback from other people. So it's, it's pretty cool. Another thing which I really like with app stores is monetization is that you don't have to go through the usual model of uh, customized advertising, personalized advertising to make money, right? You can actually sell something with this. Like on the web, on the other hand, everything is free, which basically you means you, you give your data and your attention in exchange of a service. Um, I wish there were other business models um, and selling to the user a web application would be fantastic. It's possible on, on mobile uh, phones through the app stores, but it doesn't quite exist right now uh, with, with, uh, with open web applications. So I wish it would exist. And I think we can have the best uh, of, of, both, of both worlds and Mozilla is working on something like that. We're working on creating an app store for the web. Well, let me rephrase that. We're not creating an app store for the web. We're creating a specification so that people can build app stores for the web. So it's, it's the early days, but we already have written the specification so we can have app stores on the web. So if you buy, but, but something really webby, I would say, very like the open web. So you could buy an application, and if you run, you could run it on Firefox, but if you want to use it on your cell phone, you could be able to run it on your cell phone. And if you go to your parents' place and they happen to run Safari, uh, you could use it from there, but you paid for it, and you have the, the feeling that you own it. You paid for it, so it's yours. Um, these things, we're, we're working on it. And also, if you're a vendor of such applications, you could sell uh, this application in, in an app store or actually several app stores, and you could sell them also on your own website. So an app store, but really in an open 
way. This is the things we are working on right now to bring the model of the App Store without the uh, censorship issues that you have with uh, cell phone app stores, right? Because that's, that's something um, which to me as a, as a user for a long time of technology, it is, it is creepy to see that even if I own this device or rather uh, a, an iPhone, if I own the iPhone, I pay for it and someone wants to write an application that I could use, but someone in California can decide that is, this application is not good for me. This is extremely scary. That means that someone on another continent with another culture is deciding for me what is good, good or bad to use and to buy on the PC or the device that I paid for. This is, this is very scary in the sense that this is limiting our freedom to use technology. And I, I don't think this is good for society on the long term. So if we, if we want at Mozilla to push the App Store model, um, we want to make sure it's good for society and we want to make sure it's open so that if a store rejects your application as a, as, a, as, a, as a developer, you have other ways, other app stores to go to so that these people will accept to sell your application uh, to the masses. So it's a, it's very, um, it's a very different way. It's the, it's the app store model with the open way of, of, of doing uh, business. That's it. If you have, uh, I don't know if you have some questions. Thank you. No questions? Any no? questions? Yes. <laughs> yes. Over there. And then uh, okay. It's a, a, a very long question with different sub items. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm developing a uh, mobile application with HTML5, and actually we are using PhoneGap as a packetizer or, or well, to access to hardware or in a standard way yes. uh, to support multiple devices. Um, so uh, my question is, is uh, actually we, we host the, the applications locally in the application, but a good idea would be to that the applications to be uh, on the web and access uh, with PhoneGap 2, but on the web. But we don't know what would be the, um, the, the opinion of uh, companies like Apple or other companies about, because it's an important market, about having uh, applications on the cloud that they cannot control uh, because you can change your application. Today could be a, a, a funny application and tomorrow I can update the application and be a, a can, I can upload that exploit to hack uh, the computer. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of uh, questions uh, about uh, how can I uh, distribute and what are going to be the market, uh, um, I don't know how to say, it, the orientation of the... Uh, yes. yes, so uh, and w what's your question then? Uh, <laughs> what's your opinion about what is going to be the, the, the way we have, uh, we, the, the way we have to distribute our applications actually, not in the uh, near future? Well, so my, my answer is, is, uh, is twofold. First, we want to make sure that in the browser you have access to the hardware um, so that your applications uh, can do very cool stuff. Uh, what we already have done is um, geolocation, um, meaning that uh, the, the web page can access geolocation data know where you are and offer um, content that is uh, geolocated, provided 
that the user agrees with it. We, so we, we actually ask the user uh, with a question like, the application wants to know where you are, do you agree to give this information? Uh, and the answer is basically yes, always, no, never, uh, or uh, yes, just once. Um, because we want the user to be um, in control. We want the user to have the choice over uh, the experience. So geolocation, we already do it. Um, uh, hardware, uh, the, the accelerometer also, uh, so basically uh, the position of, of the device, uh, whether it's vertical or horizontal, uh, this is something we're doing. Uh, we're, we're, we have prototypes that access uh, also uh, the camera, so we can take pictures and video, um, and the, the idea also is to capture audio because you know you have microphones and, and cameras in your device, whether it's a PC like that or it's a cell phone. Um, we want to enable the application to see that. So from, a, I would say, a programmatic standpoint, we can do that. We're working on it. We also need to make sure this is a standard way so that other vendors uh, like Apple and others can do it uh, in their own browser. So we are not the only one. We want to make everyone grow and make better a web browser, you know, we're a non-profit organization, we want to improve the web. Um, so on the technical side, yes, uh, we, we're working on making it happen. Now there is the security model issue, whether the uh, user agrees or not uh, to do that. And then there is the App Store uh, model where uh, the App Store, I mentioned earlier, the App Store can say, oh, this program has changed significantly uh, since you bought it, and uh, maybe, maybe you shouldn't use it. Or, but it's it's not us. It is the app store to deal with this. We, but we are writing the requirements, the specification for an app store, um, and it's it's still a work in progress. But we want to make sure the app store has the uh, possibility to tell the users, well, this cool app that you bought one year ago now is is turning in something a little uglier and freaky, and maybe you, you, you would want to disable it, that, that, that kind of thing. But it's not, in our, it's not our job to do it, it's just to enable app stores to do it uh, later on. And uh, the last question uh, about the WAP, WAC, uh, uh, WAP, WAC store, the UBL, uh, or WAC, there are, there are a lot of companies like Telefonica and there's like a, a new HTML web-based uh, market for for mobile apps. I'm not sure to know what you're uh, uh, talking about. Uh, there's, a, there's a project or a consortium uh, called WAC that is, uh, has uh, developed an S SDK to develop mobile applications uh, for uh, uh, with HTML5 or similar, and I didn't know that. Yeah, it's supported by most uh, tele uh, companies, tele uh, telecommunications companies. Uh, What's to answer your no, opinion I, about I, that? I, I, I can't comment on that. I, okay. I didn't know it existed. Uh, although I'm not working directly on app stores, so I, I suspect that my colleagues do know about it and know what to do about it or are thinking about it at least. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to answer uh, that. Thank you. You're one, welcome. One more question, maybe, over there. Yeah, I'm too talkative. They, they, they need to cut me out. Hi. Okay, you have said one of the, well, the, the greatest thing about the internet is the freedom, but have you heard about the network neutrality and all that stuff? Yes, a little. <laughs> what, what, what I mean, about it? Yes, yes. Um, it is. It, it is a policy issue. I mean, it's for politicians and, and citizens uh, to to do it. I am personally very concerned about net neutrality and uh, censorship and uh, internet filtering. Uh, I happen to be a French citizen, and we are. We, we, well, the government uh, leaked a document two days ago in France 
um, that makes us think that we are going to be better than China uh, in, greeting, uh, in, in building a great firewall. Uh, and when I mean better than China, I mean worse. Um, so I'm, I'm extremely concerned as a, as a citizen of the internet of uh, what is going on. And I encourage each of you to go and document yourself on what net neutrality is um, and internet filtering is and um, vote and raise your voice accordingly because I think it's a very important issue. Um, Mozilla uh, has, has stated that we're in favor of net neutrality um, and in, in the US um, and I think it's a, it's a good start. Uh, we probably need to do more uh, than just that. Net neutrality is a very serious and important issue. Last question. The last question there. No question? Yeah. Yes. One more. The last one. Hi. Hello. I would like to know your opinion about a Spartan project on Facebook. What is developing now? On the, on, on the what? A Spartan project. I don't yes. know about it. But okay. I'm going to learn soon, I promise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, bef before we all go, um, I want to do a group picture. So if you uh, love the open web, uh, please raise your hand. Do you like the open web? Yes? <laughs> well, I can't hear you. Do you like the open web? Come on, <laughs> do you like the open web? You love it? One, yeah. two, yes. You're, everybody's sleeping, we need more coffee here. Thank you very much. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tri Tristan, Tristan, wait, wait for us. <laughs> Tristan, came back. Tristan, not so fast. <laughs> well, this bird is called uh, Chapela, and it's a very typical uh, tribute. <laughs> so we hope you like it. Just put Thank it you. Yeah. It yeah. yeah, I need some help. Like this. Uh. Please, uh, pictures, pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you time. very much. <laughs>